Hey, good evening, guys. Just missed another rainstorm that came through. And uh, didn't get much out of it, but just a little bit. Hey, good evening. I was hoping we could get corn planted here this afternoon, and it's getting pretty dry with the winds and stuff, and now it's another rainstorm came through. This corn here was planted, I think it was around April the 25th, and that's really doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't know. I keep getting the question, what about this tobacco? What about this tobacco? Well, hey James, I'm not a big fan of putting a crop in and watching it disappear. So I'm just uh, riding the fence. Hey, good evening, Rick. It's still raining again, a little bit coming down. Hey, good evening. So everything's on a standstill. I'm just thankful we'll have some corn in the ground and, and it's growing. But it's just one of those things, it's just, I can't finish planting corn and uh, Yeah, that was that was because of my daughter. She told me to get a new one. But this morning she got a ride in it and she wanted me to drop her off over by the house and she said We have hay that needs to be made tomorrow, next day, next day, all the way until September. But when it rains you can't make no hay. Especially good hay. Um, yeah, so she told me I need to get it clean, so that's what I did, got it clean. So we have spraying we need, and I can't spray, and so everything just kind of a standstill. <laughs> but, you know, I thought I, we got through our weather pattern from last year. And um, I finally, we had water in this tank, I finally drained it out because it was just sitting there too long. So we got fuel came in, so you have a video later on. Fuel, when we have a fuel truck come, we fill everything up. We want to make sure everything's ready to go. And uh, they'll usually bring fuel right out to the field for me. Uh, that delivery uh, company, they do pretty good service. I have two guys that do the same thing in our area. So when fuel's needed, it comes right to the tractors out in the field. And and then we fill this 500-gallon tank up just for a spare. But here comes the rain again. So... <laughs> That's right, Rick. Get to do it all next year again. I'm going to tell you, every year like this, it takes the the wind out of your sails. Hey, Peppy Farms, how's it going? A little more rain coming down. So I just got to talk a little bit about our schedule is here for this week. Uh, Friday, we're going to start cutting barley if it's not raining. Yeah, we already talked about the cash crop uh, in the beginning of this video, so I won't keep repeating things. I have to watch it over again. Um, so we're going to shoot for cutting barley on Friday. Uh, finish cleaning that dirt up. I want to bring two trucks in and start hauling early in the morning. It's alright. I just can't repeat it all over again. 
and um, so we'll get that barley off the field. But hopefully, well, they're saying the 90s probably tomorrow, maybe again. And I think we'll be out of our uh, rain pattern, but it's going to take a little bit to get the ground dry. Uh, what else? <laughs> Cattle are doing really well. We did clean the lower barn out today. Which you would have seen that in the video earlier. And um, my wife, she got to run the skiller the first time. And um, she enjoyed that. But um, we do have, we have one guy that has hay laying, so it's been getting rained on here twice now. So that quality is not going to be there much more. Yeah, I got a new helper. It just takes a little time to get used to it, and then you uh, you can start working in a little bit closer uh, area where you have to worry about hitting stuff. And but she did a really good job. Hey, good evening, Walker Dairy Farm. Hello from England. How's the weather in England? Are you hot and dry again, or is it rainy season over there again? I know you guys were dry last year at this time. Some parts, I guess. I don't have any corn in the ground yet. Um, Wisconsin, too much rain for us, too. I just put a new video, put up four new videos. Walker Dairy Farm says. And, um, yeah, I'm just glad to have some corn in the ground. Hey, Larry. Yeah, some places down uh, on the other side of Mount Julian area, they, I guess, got pretty hit pretty hard. <laughs> Again, and I seen another guy out in uh, northern Pennsylvania, and they had hail. I'm not sure which day, day it was, but... Yeah, I really like that gold fire, that new rig. It's... Really want to put it through its paces here. She'll, she wants to go. How much rain did you get? I don't know. The ground was about fit around 3 34 o'clock, and then uh, more rain came in. Upper Michigan was 79 today, in the 30s tonight. Crazy. Um, Yep, 30s tonight in northern Michigan. That's. Did you uh did you get anything in the ground, uh, Peppy Farms? Where is the? Where is the what? Not a thing. Never planted it so late. <laughs> um, I think it's, uh, I think it's, um, uh, probably around 7.30, something like that. 7.29. Thanks, Paul. I knew I looked at it when I came out, but... This field here is doing pretty good. A little too much rain, I guess. Some spots that, low, that lie low over there. Hope you had a great day, Paul.
Yeah, there's some nicer corn further uh, south of me. This guy's got it in and just perfect timing and But the barley is really changing fast. I don't know if you've seen that photo. Yeah, this here corn's not too bad. It just it looks like a little too much yellow there in certain spots. Uh, um, in the where the water was standing there the other week, but we had a heavy rain. It was a mess, and I think it pushed some of my uh, chemical spray my program. And help burn some of the corn down. I'm not sure, just a little bit of spots. But overall, this field looks pretty good. So, we're going to try to bring that barley crop in on Friday. Yeah, Friday we'll start chopping barley. And um, I don't know if we'll do bags yet or a bunk yet. We're waiting for another tractor to come and. Uh, so it's it's up in the air if that tractor will be here by Friday or not. Um, what else? So that's going to be the up the the factor there. Uh, if we're going to um, put it in a bag or make a pile. You get a tornado yesterday. It was in our area, David. Um, I guess it was uh, about an hour north of or south of us. <laughs> I guess they didn't get the memo yet, Paul. I told them, well, I'll tell them about the tractors when I'm ready to tell them about the tractors. So. Anyway. We finally, uh. We're finally deciding, you know, on Friday if we're going to do bag or, or uh, put it in a trench. And um, so, anyway, what I wanted to say was we're just kind of waiting for this weather to straighten out a little bit and finish up around here doing things. If if it gets too long here, we're going to switch over to put everything sedan grass or sorghum. So. Uh, it's not going to be a. It's not going to be a hard decision to make, uh, if the weather doesn't straighten out. We had a tornado here. The grandson, at the grandson today, toy tractors all over the living room. Two-year-old carpet farm. <laughs> That's right, Larry. Just have some patience. I don't want to. I don't. I don't have any. I'm not gonna sit and, and explain everything until it's done. So it doesn't really affect anything for the channel. It's just we're just doing things a little different. That's good, Paul. Some of these guys get so worked up about stuff, and it's just like. Oh, here's my ducks, Paul. I'm going to visit my ducks. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. Maybe some people will... Let's see if we can get close up to our ducks. Um, I had some guys here yesterday, and they said, Oh, we'll shoot those ducks. I said, No, they're my pet ducks. You see them down there by the... There they go. Can you see the ducks over by the green bin? Two wild ducks. They'll walk right in the steer barn there and they'll 
eat uh, the grain out of the, the corn out of the, the feed. That'd be neat if she has little ones walking around here next. So anyway, these guys said there's some wild ducks, and they want to act like they're going to shoot them, you know, pretend. I said, no, they're my pets. And then they got all red. Well, not really, but it was kind of funny because <laughs> so I'll let the ducks go. The eh, wind blew again, messed things up in here. Now I do not want Canadian geese. They chew the corn off like you wouldn't believe. Guys down here, the, these young calves are eating a lot of feed down there. Wind blew this around. <clears throat> Just trying to share. That's all right, Rick. <laughs> I'll send some up your way. Gotta back this out here. I'll probably have to feed these guys again tonight. Now we can fill that up. There's Matty Patty. That reminds me, Paul, I have your box just about ready to go out in the mail there for you. Hey, Ken, good evening. How are you doing? Matty Patty. I don't know why it just everybody worried about red. We want to worry about what green ones are coming. Paul, tell them just to relax. Now I gotta find my knife. <laughs> There's a list of shipping uh, lists, and you're probably down like number 35 that goes out. <laughs> Paul's number one, so we we have so many packages that go out. And it just takes time. And uh, we're going to get a bunch more hats because when you buy green equipment, they like to give things away. In this operation, we just don't have time to run, run to the post office. And I, I, most people know <laughs> you were second on a you were second on a different level, but then you get in a category, and then it gets pushed down. On a farm operation, it takes a lot to get to the post office, especially when you're dealing with weather. Hey, four guy. Uh, the beef cattle don't mind it. Um, oh, yeah, that reminds me. Something else to talk about. I'm having electrical problems at that new box. I called the electrician. And um, our fans are not running right now. 
but uh, they run for 20 minutes and they overload and then uh, it blows the main breaker. So down here at the box, I want to—I don't want to get distracted here. Um, so someone, uh, Larry, asked me about the storms. The black Angus—they don't care. They love—they love, they love uh, wind and rain and whatever comes in on there. They don't care. Holsteins now—they're real skittish down here today, and they will be again. Is the breaker not big enough for the amperage? It's a 100 amp coming out of this main box. The fan's not run now, but we'll kick them on here. And I asked them if we could turn the sensitivity up, and most electricians will know what I'm talking there, to the breaker, which this is this right in here. Anyway, the, this 100 amp right here, 100, is So we're going to go down here and start these fans up because the air is getting a little stale. Go ahead and kick along because it's warm in here. Now they didn't jump there, but you see they're getting a little warm in here. Right, so everything, he told me to check this box. That box was nice and clean. Thanks for stopping. Hey, soybean farmer. So now they'll run it for about 20 minutes. The breaker doesn't get warm out here. And the fan motors are not warm. But we'll see how long they last here. How's the weather down there, soybean farmer? Hot and dry? It's been uh, rainy here all day. So the breaker's not warm, but I'm wondering if the sensitivity to that breaker needs to be turned up, and it almost looks like it's all the way up now. So I'll have to get him to come out. There, that's what I was thinking too, Paul. The thermostat problem. Everything was brand new, but but I can bypass the thermostat. I'll show you what I mean by that. Like in this box. This is the, the controller from the thermostat. Now I'll shut the fans off. And then the thermostat over there, if that would go bad. But we have to have air moving for the cattle. Look how nice and clean this barn is though. These guys are looking pretty nice. That's a nice looking one. So I don't know how long these fans are going to keep running. Besides, it's Go back up here, I guess, and but this electrical uh, business on this farm has been a mess ever since uh, yeah, yesterday, today, well, yesterday wasn't too bad, today was pr uh, a little bit more uh, violent wind, but we had uh, rain last night, uh, soybean farmer. And then it was just about dry enough to plant corn. It was a bit a little on the wet side. And then another downpour, and you can see the water in the driveway here yet.
So we didn't get anything uh, exactly right, Larry. It's everything on the farm, and it's just never ending. Uh, we're gonna put blacks in there, all blacks. I am I am so happy when the Holsteins leave. Now we will have Holsteins for dairy yet. Just for the record there. Um, this thing needs a bath. My daughter will say I need a new baler pretty soon. Um, yeah, so we will have some Holstein dairy uh, heifers yet. But no uh, feeders anymore on the Holstein side. Everything will be blacks. <laughs> and she said uh, I did a good job of cleaning it for her. She was happy the bucket was clean. That was the biggest thing because she climbs up in here. And uh, she doesn't like a dirty machine. I don't either. But those rain weathers are just fun. Why Black Angus and not Holsteins? Well, the Holsteins were just a stepping stone to start my operation, really. It's raining everywhere. Yeah, Jimmy, it is. I'm gonna go up here and get a little corn silage and make a mix for these guys. lucky to have crops in the ground. I, I, I agree with that. Uh, skid loader operator. Yeah, if you think I'm hard to get along, wait till the boss shows up. Right, Paul? I'm easy to get along with. <laughs> Well, there's a lot to go yet. We're trying to constantly uh, improve, but it's been tough. The prices finally are coming up on these uh, cattle. Holsteins. If you're going to feed Holsteins, maybe some of you guys will know this and some of you guys will don't know what I'm talking about. You need a slatted floor with a pit underneath it. Holsteins will crap so much. No, we're, they're, we have barley to feed them. We have lots of barley to feed these uh, cattle.
Soybean farmer, the new baby is the reason why I'm so busy. <laughs> that little guy is something else. <laughs> okay, we're going to take this cart down there and feed these poor animals. There's my cap for my tote. Can't wait till this dirt's all gone. It's been a pain in my side.
there on uh, the barlin you have to use a direct cut head so it's just like a hay bind on front of a chopper does that make sense for you guys or a uh wind rower but you can't mow it down you don't know the concept of it you can't just go down there with a hay bind and mow it down it has to be cut and fed right into the chopper otherwise you lose all your barley so it's called direct cut hey thanks for stopping uh, I don't know if there's any videos on YouTube or not but you can look up for direct cut and, I, and, and then you understand how that process works if we could mow it down with a if I had a swather does anybody know what a swather is if I had a swather and then I could chop it where you lay it down you dare to run the, the grain through the crimpers of the hay bind. And there's not too many guys that have a wind rower without um, um silage bags are not the best uh, way to go but they're more expensive if you get the barley at an early stage before there's grain on it you can mow it down with a hay bind and then you'll let it dry and we've done this before we're beef cattle heifers grain a little bit of everything so once we uh, once we uh, get up and running on Friday there'll be lots of videos um, how the process goes about and I said in the beginning of the video I'm not sure if we'll use uh, we'll make a pile or in the ag bags I'm not very a fan of the bags because they're very expensive for beef cattle dairy cattle you you pretty much have to take good quality feed to them all the time well there it'll be in a, it'll be in action eventually there are some videos you can go back and watch on chopping alfalfa with it <laughs> so the barley is a little bit different when you bring it in the grain and you put it in the feed in the old days we did direct cut so you know what i mean there ken but it, when the barley right now if i would walk out there and show you the grain when you just put your hand on fall right off so you, you dare send do anything other than a swather and I was gonna look to see if there was one in the area yeah beef cattle eat anything they're not as fussy as dairy now dairy you gotta make very good quality feed and we make quality feed don't get me wrong but um, for beef cattle you can make a big pile and and you'll have excellent feed um, hello from South Alabama I gotta slide my gate over before I forget to do that. Tractor's running really well. So I heard uh, next week we'll. Yeah, I think it's next week that John Deere will be coming here to the farm. So I'm very excited about that. And um, so we want to have everything. Uh, I don't know if we'll get a chance to make a video, but they're going to talk about the baler. Uh, I guess there's some, maybe some, maybe some guys. Oh. Uh, one guy there'll probably be one guy from the the baler factory coming and um i guess i better not say anything until i know for sure who all is coming but i know there's a couple guys coming from deer uh to visit us here on the operation so see there's another reason you have nice nice hay you don't need to put it inside for beef cattle And has a nice color to it inside there. But they like the feet outside anyway. So 
So we give them, uh, we'll give two bales roughly every other day to them right now. It depends how much they clean up. So they're going to talk about the, the equipment a little bit more and um, and um, what they what they uh, can help us out with the new designs and stuff a little bit. So we'll see what I have Tuesday. Her plans are to have the equipment lined up here in the driveway and then we can go walk around it and stuff. And I'm not sure if they'll let us make a video for YouTube or not, but they're going to be really interested in it. No, we do have a YouTube channel. So, hey, thanks for stopping. So I'm not sure exactly when they're coming next week yet, but... Let's go check our fans and see if they're still running. So there's some of you guys are just coming in here. We're still dealing with an electric problem here. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> yeah, they'll see it. Well, they know, Larry, they already know that I'm a deer man. They know exactly what all we purchased. Yep, fans are still running. Hey, thanks for stopping, Soybean Farmer. I hope you have a great evening. Yeah, maybe they might bring me a, a, a new uh, sticker for the for the truck. We're near the uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the capital. Yeah, I definitely won't miss the Holsteins. Uh, we, we enjoyed them, don't get me wrong. It's just the Holsteins will eat and eat and uh, take so much more to gain weight. They're a little red. But like to keep that barn clean like this, guys, it's it's a lot of work. We did it on Friday. Put a John Deere plate on the Ford. You know, I always have well there is one on the front, in there? The wife needs one on hers. Did get the grass mode today. Yeah, the poor farm truck it needs a that needs a good cleaning up too. But yeah, I think there's a there's a John Deere plate in the front unless someone took it. Of course there's a John Deere plate on the front of that. It'd take a lot for me to buy a Dodge. Larry will tell you that. <laughs> So back to the question, the ag bag, I like them. Yeah, they are nice. Don't get me wrong. Um, as many bags we make, they're very expensive. <laughs> um, 
Would I love to have a silo? Yes, I would love to have a silo. Well, what's the difference in making it to another company? It's part of farming. Yeah, sunset is finally coming through again. You gotta remember, I always had John Deere before Case and, and New Holland. But I bought three uh, New Holland skid loaders, and there's nothing wrong with them. I know where a nice L230 is if you're interested, if you want one. But that ground's too wet. Sticking on my boots. It's gonna take a little bit more to dry it out again. No, we won't mud it in. Now I enjoy planting tobacco. Just I don't enjoy watching the crop get, get disappeared because of too much rain. So if we can't get this ground dry, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put sedan grass in here. Not when you're feeding beef cattle. That's, see, that's the difference of running cattle and just grain farmers. Grain farmers have to one way and one way only. When you have a cattle operation and it's always expanding, you need lots of feed. <laughs> I know you guys are dry down there. Well, you know what it was like last year, Paul? It was a nightmare. And you know, there's water laying down there in the tracks before we drove the skiller down the other day. And always love watching the sunset go down. Hopefully the storms are done for the night. I'm shocked it didn't rain today. You mean down there, uh, Paul, or here? It did rain here. We had a couple rough storms blow through. Yeah. Well, where I seen the weather looks like it's going to be nice to uh, next couple days. It just the chances just keeps going down less and less. Hey, at least I got corn in the ground. I know there's guys that have it a lot worse than I do, so I'm not complaining. Yeah, night. I don't know how many days we had here actually rain, but not as many as you guys probably, Logan. I forget where you guys are located roughly. Hot and humid there, they have to put a chance of storms in the forecast. Northern Indiana. Are you guys uh are you guys getting corn in the ground? You probably told me, but I I talked to so many people, it's unreal. Just with Instagram and everything else, so I just 
I lose track of everybody. You see, we came over closer and closer than the grass. That corn's doing good. Can't mow grass, make money mowing grass. And down here, I came, we took the tree down and came right over to the house. Still can come over another four or five feet. Got 150. So far, but a lot of guys have nothing. Uh, crop insurance. They, I, saw, I heard on uh, on somewhere I heard that this could be uh, the highest loss or something of crops not planted or something like that for crop insurance. I'm not sure how all that works. If I would have planted, and it doesn't make sense. If I would have planted April, I think it was April the third. That was the that was ideal. Then on April the 16th, we had. Now let's see. Let's back up here. Yeah, April the. We planted on April the 25th, but then we had a frost. And then the corn was still in the ground. We had a frost, and I think it was like April. Uh, early part of May, maybe there was a frost that came through, not a heavy frost. But April, uh, April between April the third and the fifteenth, those were the best planting days for this farm. And I was going off what last year happened. This corn here was planted April the twenty-fifth. Um, if I would have planted it all, knowing that you know how much rain we were getting, uh, we did have high water, so I couldn't do it in my lower fields. And um, and I dealt with a lot of wet spots, and that's I you just take a you take a risk of planting corn that early, and then then replant and everything else. And I didn't want to do all the replanting this year, so that's why I'm a little bit more holding back, uh, trying to figure out you know shoulda coulda woulda and yeah. But, um, hey, I'm happy what we have in. Yeah, April 18th is the best for me. I don't care what anybody else says. We had some rain on the 18th this year, so it wasn't going to happen. So we got to the 25th, and there the corn is. So sit back and watch it grow. <laughs> uh, it's just... Exactly. It's... Making decisions all the time is hard. Especially in farming, and you know the you know the real farmers that are on here. You're talking, and then you know the who ones are pretend to be farmers, because how much does it cost to fill the corn plier just with seed once? Well, you can get a bag, and there's 16 rows. You put a bag of seed in each one, and sorry about that. Lost year. So, you know, if the seed corn is between $200 to $300 a bag times 16 just to fill it. Well, guys, my battery is down about 16%. Appreciate everybody coming out. Yeah, we plant 33,600 population. Um, it does well in our area for that, even for shell corn. and So we'll see how these two new brands, there's two new hybrids in this field that I just did this year. One is Augusta and the other one is uh, ChemGrow. And you can go back if you want to know the numbers, check those videos out again. And uh, yeah, you have to spend money to make money. That's why there's green equipment coming in. You got to spend it to make it. Spend the and to spend green to buy green and to make green. So, 
All right, guys. I hope you have a great evening. Thanks for all stopping out. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but just uh, plan on Friday for chopping. <laughs> So, the cow, the I have nothing against us. So, have a great evening, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you later.